Good evening, Sarah. Great to be with you. You too. What happened to emerging markets? This is supposed to be the everything rally, stocks and bonds and the dollar and Bitcoin and a lot of high hopes for a recovery. And yet the EEM, which tracks emerging markets, the ETF, is down 5 percent this year. Why? Well, it's been a, a variety of different things, but the big drag on EM this year has been China. Um, what we've seen is investors running away from Chinese equities on the view that China has become uninvestable, which I would argue is a big mistake. And, and Chinese equities have really been, uh, I think, very oversold in the past year on concerns about increasing regulations as well as slowing growth. So today, we, we saw all of those Chinese Internet stocks that trade here in the U.S. have the best day they've had since 2008. That is U.S. listed Chinese companies. Is this a sign of a turning point? Why are you bullish? Well, it could be because what we've seen uh, is a, a situation in which this is a buying opportunity. Valuations are quite attractive. And we think we're getting closer to the end of regulations as opposed to the beginning of more regulations. In fact, uh, if we were to chart the, the regs over the past year, they peaked this summer and have come down since then. Um, so this could be an environment, especially given that China is enacting um, fiscal and monetary support um, that should propel uh, Chinese economic growth higher in 2022, carrying along equities with it. What, what visibility do you have, though, really into the Chinese regulatory process? I think it caught a lot of investors off guard to see just how much they hammered their own sectors and industries and companies like Aditi, which was the poster child, really. So, so why, why do you have confidence that it's getting better? Well, we don't have visibility. You're absolutely right. Um, that's part of why Chinese equities are so attractively valued right now. Um, but what we do know is that Chinese policymakers have a common prosperity goal. And they're really focused on a few different key areas for regulation, or shall I say reform, um, including um, uh, you know, areas like financial stability, um, uh, better conditions for workers, um, data security. And so if we take a step back and understand what the policy goals are, mm. uh, it's easier to give an assessment about um, how far along they are in terms of regulations and what to expect in the coming year. And they are, they are stimulating a little bit, which is always a good thing for investors. Uh Broadly, Christina, the problem for emerging markets next year could be what the Federal Reserve is about to do, which is raise interest rates. There are expectations that the Fed will start hiking rates for the first time now in years, two, maybe even three times. That usually drives money into the U.S. dollar, money chases yield, and out of places like emerging markets makes it harder, hurts their currencies. How, how do they stand up to that? Well, first of all, this is an incredibly accommodative monetary policy environment. And if we do get those three rate hikes that are expected uh, for 2022, it's still a very accommodative environment. But let's go back to 2013. Emerging market, um, when we um, uh, give some trouble, uh, emerging market that was an environment in which they were far more vulnerable. Um, today, there's more financial stability there. Uh, I think they can weather, uh, tolerate rate hikes better. Uh, so it's a very, very different situation today. Uh, again, a more accommodated monetary policy environment, and they're in better conditions. All right. Making the case for emerging markets. Christina Hooper, thank you for joining us tonight.